our studio guest. Uh, in fact, he was uh, dropped me a line a little earlier this morning to mention that we're going to be talking about uh, various allergies today. It's uh, 834. We're at 52. Actually, the temperature feels quite nice. Uh, you can't really see the sun right now through the haze. That's one of those allergies you may be dealing with from smoke. I'm sure some people are struggling with that. But uh, better health with Trip Family Medicine this morning until 9 o'clock. And we're joined in studio. Uh, I'm joined with Bill Colley by Dr. Jonathan Tripp. Uh, we should point out Trip Family Medicine is named after him. That's not it's not Smith or Jones. Or... That's right. No, good morning. In fact, uh, I just sent a... Um... A photo that I took a picture of the sun this morning as I came out of, yes, I'll brag about exercising, as I came out of the gym this morning, I sent that photo to my daughter in Kentucky and said, uh, you know, here's the red sun rising over uh, Twin Falls on a smoky day. So yeah, today we are hit, well, this whole week, since Tuesday, we're hit with, uh, according to the um, Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, with the worst or very unhealthy air quality. And, uh, you know, the smoke is, is the biggest part of it. Um, really interesting is we went to uh, San Diego and uh, talked with a lady who's originally from China, and she talked about how great the air quality is in, in uh, San Diego. And my wife and I looked at each other and just kind of laughed and said, uh, this is terrible, you know, you should, you should see where we live. But, of course, today, this week, we're probably as bad as any major metropolitan area uh, in the U.S. China, I think, is just any metropolitan area there is bad all the time, every day, much worse than uh, even we are today. But today we're going to talk about uh, the title I gave to today's talk was Help, I'm Under Attack. And so this is for all of you that are fighting either seasonal allergies mm -hmm. or uh, reactions to the smoke, dust, whatever's going on but there is a lot of it going on. I don't have as many issues with allergies now. I think they've attenuated somewhat, but when I was younger, especially teen years and early 20s, uh, it, would always, it wasn't even spring or early summer, but late August into September, I would have major issues to the point where, you know, my eyes, I'd have to put a wet washcloth over my eyes and, you know, spend some time on the couch, uh, the machine gun sneezing, and as soon, as soon as things started to basically get brown, toward the end of summer was where I experienced that. Yeah, no, uh, we have people that suffer uh, with very serious allergies uh, all the way up until we get a hard frost. And so as things do kind of die off, there's less pollen, there's a lot less in the air. Um, and so we're going to talk about some of what the symptoms are, uh, what symptoms are not related to allergies, and then uh, we're going to talk about you know, what's the cause behind this? Because not everybody gets allergies, but we're all mm -hmm. exposed to pretty much the same environmental stuff. So let me just talk about symptoms. Uh, things that everybody's familiar with. Watery eyes or itchy eyes, mm -hmm. runny nose, uh, a cough, usually combined with a scratchy throat. You just always got <clears throat> something to clear. Um, nasal congestion, uh, even to the point where you have headaches. Usually that's uh, at the forehead or behind the eyes, some pressure there. Um, and uh, often people talk about their ears feeling clogged or muffled. Those are all just part of what's going on in your nose, the back of your throat, sinus areas that are in relation to the uh, allergic response. And so these symptoms can be anything from just annoying to truly debilitating. So, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, you were kind of stuck on the couch with a washcloth and machine gun sneezing. That's That's a real scene. And what I like is the fact that you've found out that having a washcloth actually seemed to reduce some of the, the symptomatology for you. So there's a doctor word. That's a 50 center <laughs> symptomatology. Um, so uh, I want to talk also about what are some of the things we can do and uh, see if we can do a lot of do-it-yourself help on this rather than just, hey, come to my office, we have a prescription. Uh, we do, and uh, but there's a lot of stuff you can do either at home uh, or using over-the-counter medications. So those are some of the things we want to touch on today. And I didn't have any choice because what I would have to do, especially uh, late summer, was clear brush. And uh, that was my job because Dad was away at work, so I would be out. At, and these were long briars and, and, you know, prickly bushes and things like that. And he, despite the, uh, the gloves I'd have on and the long sleeve shirt, I'd be not only dealing with all of the allergies but with the black flies as well. 
which only seemed to make matters worse. Oh, nice. Um, but but it, it truly was. As long as I wasn't knee-deep in this, and unfortunately I was through most late summers, but if I could get away inside sometimes for about half an hour, it would seem to ease up calm, fast. Calm down. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, uh, in fact, a lot of what we're going to talk about is uh, knowing what your triggers are and then uh, knowing how to avoid them because that's, that's probably the number one thing that we can individually do is if we identify what gives us trouble is take efforts to avoid it or at least to uh, uh, avoid it getting in our eyes, our nose, and things like that. So um, number one, you know, why doesn't everybody get allergies? Because I have uh, spent... Hold hold that thought. All right. That'll be our jumping off point after the break. Uh, I want to mention, though, it's 53. Uh, On our way, maybe, uh, to 90 today if the sun could get through, uh, Dr. Jonathan Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine is in studio with us. Better health with Tripp Family Medicine until 9 o'clock. Uh, Bill Colley answering the telephones. And uh, you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Dr. Jonathan Tripp joining us in studio until 9 o'clock this morning. We're at 842. Bill Colley as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. This segment is called Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. The doctor doesn't say it often, but there's a great slogan at his office life's too short not to feel good, especially for allergy sufferers. Um, and Speaking of your office, uh, for someone who'd like to get in touch with you there, how do they go about that? Yeah, welcome to call us at uh, 208-933-4400. That's 208-933-4400. You can also reach us at Facebook at Trip Family Medicine as well as at our website, tripfamilymedicine.com. And uh, we have two awesome uh, physician assistants, Russell and Jeremy, that work with us, very smart guys and uh, have a great breadth and depth of uh, experience, and I use them a lot to get my second opinion. So we really have a uh, combined practice of sharing ideas, sharing patients, and so if you can't get in and see who you wanted to see that day, almost always there's an availability to see somebody else that uh, is going to do well by you. And at our office, our, uh, our, it's called modus operandi, whatever that really means. you know, it's our, our plan of operating that if you're hurt or you're sick, call us. We'll get you in. Somebody will see you today. So in a way, we work as an urgent care, but it's an urgent care where you're known. And, uh, you know, this, you know, we, we get lacerations. We have uh, acute abdominal pain yesterday, you know, whether uh, we have urinary tract infections, upper respiratory, especially with all these allergies. You know, we got people that are just at wit's end kind of suffering through all this. I'll give you a quick example. We didn't know my wife was allergic to cats. And uh, she had had no problem growing up. And after being newly married, she went and visited somebody's house (laughs) and had the cat get up on her lap. She petted the cat like normal and apparently touched her eyes or something. But her eyes immediately swelled shut to where she could not drive home. And they had to put her in the back seat of another car and bring her home because her eyes were so swollen. So if you've got a fun story about allergies or some great ideas, you know, feel free to call us. What's that number? Ah, the number here, seven through, well, we've got to say 208 now. Yep. 208-736-0300, 208-736-0300. And you were also talking just before the break about, well, what should you do? I mean, yeah, why, do, why doesn't everybody have? You don't have, have to suffer, right? Yeah. Why doesn't everybody have allergies? Here's, here's uh, kind of the quick and dirty version of that. Um, not everybody's immune system operates the same, uh, and some become kind of hyperactive uh, or go on uh, hyperdrive, I'll call it, to things that are they're exposed to in the air. And it's not everything. You know, some people are allergic to everything that exists on the planet, or so they feel like, and and others just have a few selected irritants. And so, like I said earlier, these can range from symptoms of a little bit of annoying you know, runny nose or a little bit of congestion to where you just, like my wife, she was truly debilitated by being around the cats. Um, the, uh, but so everybody's different. Um, and you, so you have those that just have a less reactionary immune mm-hmm. system. And as a result, you don't get the irritation. So let me, let me talk a little bit about how that reaction happens. Uh, if you think of, uh, an inside of a room as the inside of your nose, your back of your throat, kind of those mucous membranes are the lining of the wall. And then you get these things that, you know, are like Velcro that just stick to the wall. 
and your body says, hey, you know, these things don't belong on the wall. And uh, so the way that it responds is either by just trying to flush it off mm -hmm. with uh, fluid, or it actually comes and attacks it, trying to kill whatever these things are that are attack attaching to the wall. Uh, with the belief, the body thinks uh, that, hey, this is a, an attacking virus or bacteria or fungus, something that, you know, we got to get out or it could cause us, you know, serious harm. So some people's uh, immune systems really identify everything as an attacker and others are a little bit more discerning. If you grew up on a farm or near a lot of pets as a kid, I understand you don't have as many allergies as somebody who grew up in a much more sterile environment. You know, there is a lot of truth to what we're seeing in that. And yet you, you would think it's the opposite, that, you know, the more exposure, the more reactionary you'd become. And uh, that's not to say that if somebody has allergies that you ought to go out and, you know, sit in a field of ragweed to see if you can overcome it. It's a little bit at a time is how it works. In fact, there's an interesting study done about five years ago, came out of uh, Denmark. And uh, what they found is that parents with, uh, you know, kids that used pacifiers. They had, uh, I think it was three different groups, but basically what they found is the parents that would lick off, you know, or you put the pacifier in their own mouth and shove it back in the kid's mouth actually had a much lower rate of uh, allergies as a uh, child, adolescent, you know, young adult, as opposed to the parent that sterilized the, uh, or, you know, washed off the pacifier before putting it back in the child's mouth. So apparently a little bit of exposure uh, through the parent actually helped out. Well, I have a bizarre story like that. When you talk about trying to sterilize something, I was about 10 years old and I had some blood drawn from uh, my left arm. And afterward, a nurse took a cotton ball and with a little rubbing alcohol to sterilize the area, swabbed it with rubbing alcohol, and then put a bandage over it. When the bandage came off, I had a great big blister there. Now, I was assume that was caused by the rubbing alcohol. I, uh... I would actually, uh, have you had rubbing alcohol since? Not to my knowledge, no. Yeah, I was going to, it could be, but I would say it's probably more likely the adhesive. But you'd have to tell me your history with uh, Band-Aid since that time. We and, have a we have a caller with us. Caller, uh, it's about 849. You're up next. and You're on the air with Dr. Tripp. Go ahead. Good morning, Dr. Tripp. Um, I want to ask a question, you know, when you're allergic to like dogs and cats, and in your case, uh, sales reps. <laughs> um, why would you pick an independent uh, family practice guy over more expensive allergists first before finding out your problem? Wow. Did I pay you to make this phone call? <laughs> well, you do pay me, yes. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> now, why, why would I choose uh, primary care versus going to uh, somebody a little more expensive? Um, because most things, you know, whether it's allergies or blood pressure or... Um, Sports injuries, your uh, primary care docs uh, have a great knowledge base and can uh, take care of, uh, I can't give you an exact percentage, but I would say 80% of uh, what comes through our door we can take care of without sending you to a specialist. On the other hand, if you want to go to a specialist, we're happy to send you. This is not a, at least our office is not a situation where we're trying to keep you from going somewhere else. But the answer is, it's cheaper, it's usually quicker to get seen, and you're probably going to get the same treatment either way. Uh, you know, the, the allergist or the orthopedic surgeon aren't usually trying to hide information from primary care. It's just strictly a matter of uh, not everybody can be an expert in everything, and so primary care tends to be jack-of-all-trades and expert of a few, I'll say, because, you know, there are some things that I'm more expert than most experts. You know, one is cosmetics and lasers, uh, Botox and fillers. That's because I did a practice that was strictly those things for about five years. Um, but most primary care don't have that background. So allergies, uh, I know basics and uh, actually uh, quite a bit, but very happy to refer to an, an allergy specialist as well. But your point is well taken. Why would you go somewhere else if you can get seen sooner and get seen cheaper? Come and see us. Thanks thank for that you. call. I want to thank you. Uh, we, we had a similar conversation with Russell last week where I brought up the fact that when it comes to what you do, you're the first line of defense. Really, I, when you think about it, and no matter what people come in, because we were talking about hearing health uh, at one point last week, and the fact of the matter is they come see you first. 
and uh, and then whether it be a cold, hearing health, or a corn on someone's foot, anything like that, they're coming to you. Well, they sure can. Uh, a lot of people choose to try to go see a specialist first, and a lot of that is uh, my generation or younger has been raised with, uh, you go see a specialist for everything, and uh, if you get older than me, those are the people that, you know, had the family doc, had the country doc, the kind of general practitioner that did everything. So they understand, hey, I can go to one person. They actually do have a pretty broad knowledge base. Um, but it is. It's kind of a generational uh, teaching or point of view. And now we're swinging back where all of the healthcare industry, including the government, would like to make what's, what they call a, uh, a health home, a healthcare home. And the truth is, is traditional family medicine has always been, uh, you know, a healthcare home, and it's that's exactly true. But you know, it's interesting you bring this up because I, when I was in Delaware, I had my primary care physician, and I also had an endocrinologist that I would go see. But I would actually see her more often. Uh, I had a, like a regular ninety-day appointment with her, where maybe it was twice a year with the uh, with the family practice. Um, and it just got to be the point where I saw, you know, it's interesting. I saw the specialist more often than the gatekeeper. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that it depends on the condition. I have people that uh, see a cardiologist or uh, a neurologist or whatnot on a, a regular basis, meaning once or twice a year. And often it's the cardiologist that is then sending me directions to say, hey, this is what we'd like to do. And this is what I want you to watch for but they don't need to see me every three months. Why, do I have, why don't they see you? And so it really becomes uh, a, you know, a coordination of care, and that's what the healthcare home is all about, is trying to coordinate that care. So uh, kind of getting back to allergies, what can you do at home? Um, number one, uh, try to figure out what causes you the trouble and avoid it. Some of the things we can do in our home um, is uh, filters. We, you know, we use air conditioners. Um, and if you can get the higher quality, what's called a HEPA filter, mm -hmm. it will get rid of more of the stuff in the air and make your home kind of a safe haven. Um, I made the mistake. My wife suffers from allergies. I made the mistake because the weather cooled down about, uh, oh, Monday night. Yeah, it was Monday night when everything really got bad in the air. And uh, I left the windows open, loved the cool weather, and she woke up just suffering terribly and said, you know, you can't do this anymore. Well, the air quality is bad, and sure enough, you know, the, the next couple of days we've been suffering, or she's been suffering, and I've been suffering, you know, vicariously. Uh, so last night, the windows were shut, the, you know, the air conditioner's running, and it's basically to help avoid those symptoms. So, yeah, yeah you, you mentioned this. There are some people out there, though, that uh, the allergies they have are almost debilitating. Yeah. And can you can you provide some relief? You betcha. Um the, the beginning at home also would be uh, to consider what's called a nasal uh, rinse, a saline rinse usually. And go back to my analogy of the uh, walls of the room being like in your nose and where the allergy takes place. Um, if you can rinse those walls off once a day, you kind of give the whole system a, a reboot or a chance to start over rather than always being under attack. And so that's easy. Uh, you know, I would recommend what's called a buffered solution, meaning it's got a little salt in it. It's not as irritating to the mucous membranes, but just simply rinsing out, you know, the nose once a day is a, is a great move. Um, medically, over-the-counter medicines, antihistamines are number one. So names, brand names that you'd know, Allegra, Claritin, Zyrtec, and now uh, uh, Zyrtec has over-the-counter its newer version called Zyzol. Um, very, very good choices, um, depending on what you've had success with in the past. It may not be as good now because your body will change. I have people that suffer all year round from allergies and they'll go from, uh, they'll usually go between three or four brands and they'll go for about four months on one and then switch to another and then switch to another and then they come back to the first one because they find that, oh, I'm resensitized. So you can change around and use these different antihistamines. Um, nasal steroids, they always were prescription until about two years ago. So names like Flonase or Nasonex or Nasacort, um, you can now buy for about $17 over the counter for a month's supply. I notice all of these things at Costco now that I would not have seen a couple of years ago. Right. They, they have now become over the counter. And uh, the nasal steroids are beautiful from the point of view of 
they don't have much absorption into your body. So worries that we have about steroids in general are really minimized with this. And uh, that, so that's good. What they do is they suppress swelling. They don't care why. They don't care that you have allergies. They don't care if you have a sinus infection. They suppress swelling so your symptoms improve. Uh, but they can also thin out the skin or cause some irritation. Or if you're spraying it to the middle of your nose, you can cause yourself a nosebleed over several days. So they aren't without side effects, but they don't have the big worries that we have with long-term steroid use. Uh, so antihistamines, nasal steroids, um, decongestants are wonderful for taking pressure off. They have the downside of increasing blood pressure or making your heart race. So if you have any worries with that, please talk to your uh, doctor or your practitioner uh, before you get going on that. But the decongestants are things that we know the name Sudafed or pseudoephedrine uh, would probably be the best. And uh, then the more available one is called phenylephrine. And those, they usually are little red pills and they shoot your blood pressure up. Before we wrap up, how do they get in touch with you? Oh, get in touch with us by uh, calling 208-933-4400, 208-933-4400. And we do have other tricks for allergies if, you, if these over-the-counter systems don't work for you. And next week, we're going to talk about plasma, uh, platelet-rich plasma and injections that may involve even what's called stem cell therapy. And uh, this is the latest and a really hot topic for how to get rid of arthritis. You're, it's For joint injections, it is the superior method, and uh, we are moving that direction as an office. I want to thank Dr. Jonathan Tripp. We've got news coming up, Fox Radio News, in just a moment.